Today we will visit Los Esteros de Liberá, the most important wetland in Argentina and the second largest one in the continent. The most popular place to visit in Iberá is Colonia Carlos Pellegrini, located at about 350 kilometers from the capital city of Corrientes province. I am accompanied by a group of nature photographers. We arrived at Carlos Pellegrini in the evening and the next morning we enjoyed a fantastic sunrise over the lagoon near the village. A little later, we left the village port to explore the lagoon with our guide Sebastián. The guide of each boat needs to register the activities in the ranger station. The available navigation schedules are also very strict and must be respected by all. The Esteros de Liberá were declared Provincial Nature Reserve in April 1983. The Iberá wetland system is composed of a network of rivers, streams, marshes, ponds and lagoons covering an area of 1.3 million hectares. The lagoon which we are exploring has an average depth of about 3 meters. Something very special of these lagoons is the presence of floating islands called embalsados. We were surprised by the quantity of wildlife and how close we could get to observe them. In Iberá there are two species of caiman. One is the black jacare that we are seeing now and is the most common in this area. And the other one is the jacare ñato or overo whose population is much lower because of it was heavily hunted before Iberá became a nature reserve.
caimans are reptiles that can reach 2.5 meters and in some cases even 3 meters. They are carnivores that mainly feed on snails and fish. They are also able to hunt other reptiles, birds and small mammals if necessary, but they usually avoid it because it consumes too much of their energy. Except in cases of self-defense or extreme hunger, they are not aggressive toward humans. When basking in the sun, caimans keep their mouths open to regulate their body temperature. Another animal that is very commonly seen in Iberá is the capybara. Here they call them carpinchos. Although it inhabits other regions of Argentina, it is difficult to observe closely because of its fear of humans. But here the capybaras have completely lost this fear and we can easily observe them from a short distance. On their backs it's common to see a cattle tyrant a bird who feeds on the parasites living on their bodies. The capybara is the largest rodent in the world and can weigh up to 70 kilograms. Consumes terrestrial and aquatic plants. These rodents live in groups of up to 20, with one dominant male, several young males and females. This gland on the snout is what distinguishes the adult males. Here we see another bird, the yellow-headed caracara, which, with the apparent cooperation of the capybara, feeds on the parasites that live on their bodies. But perhaps the animal that creates more expectations to observe in Iberá is this one, the marsh deer. Here we see a female crossing an arm of the lagoon. The marsh deer is the largest deer of South America. Formerly widespread throughout the entire area of the subtropical continent, today it is reduced to small isolated populations in estuaries and lagoons of the Paraná and Paraguay river basins. Due to hunting, there has been a large decline in their population and its status is now considered in danger of extinction. However, here in Iberá, this deer can find safe shelter as we only hunt him with our cameras. Iberá is a fascinating case to study a place to learn about one of the most remarkable situations of coexistence between humans and wildlife.
This happens from an interesting process that began with the transformation of a way of life based on hunting to another where the conservation of this once hunted species has now become an attraction for visitors. Iberá is an example that demonstrates that a well-managed tourism contributes to the preservation of biodiversity. Today, these ancient hunters, who once killed for meat and the leather of capybaras, alligators, boas, giant otters and deers, had become park rangers and instructors of the new trustees of Ibera biological richness. What happens in Ibera is no coincidence, is the result of planning and government awareness, the work of environmental organizations who provide knowledge and resources, and above all, the local people. This achievement would not have been possible without their determination. Ibera surprises, marvels and educates the visitor who is looking forward to returning. I hope you have all enjoyed this wonderful experience as much as we did.